Now we're gonna try to do some dismantling and this is about removing our logos. Um, with this model, as with any vintage model, these are presumed to be irreplaceable and the value significantly reduced if we, um, if we screw them up. In my early days of attempting this, I tried and failed and I would be banging on them and um, ended up denting them and typically end up putting a little uh, quarter inch, uh, eighth inch drill hole through it so I could yank it out and um, destroy it and then replace it with a modern new one. The modern new ones are perfectly fine. They only cost a couple dollars, but they have kind of a domed shape. You can see that on this modern one, it's got that domed shape and um, and the the letters are screened on as opposed to etched and filled and it's just a different look compared to the vintage ones this one has a modern production but i'm doubtful that i'd be able to get more i doubt they keep them in stock so these are worth gold to me to preserve so step one for removing is we use suction cups this is a valentine one radar detector windshield mount and it's got a, just the right size of suction cup that I use um, that's just a little smaller overall. Sometimes on the older models, I get lucky. Ah, look, I got lucky on this one too. It just popped right out. And so as you can see here, it has what looks like a, a clear, um, maybe it's an epoxy or some kind, of a, some kind of a glue there. They call it more like hard candy. It also has a sticky, um, surprisingly, a, a sticky double back tape feel to the back. That's their standard approach. So I think they do belt and suspenders on these. All I ever do now is just double stick tape. Um, because I was expecting a double stick tape, those tend to be a little gummy. They tend not to pop like that. They tend to require a little heat to melt it. So we'll see how lucky we get on the other ones. By the way, I'm gonna preserve this carefully. I'll probably stick it against a a plastic bag surface or something like that. I'll just put it someplace safe for now. And again, those are, those are precious. This one, cross your fingers. That, oh, a little more tension, but it popped right out. Um, I've never seen a suction cup that could cause any damage. Um, I've had plenty of these where the suction cup would pull as hard as it can and draw a vacuum and it simply would not remove. Um, um, then 90% of those remove nicely with heat. And just, I have my heat gun at the ready here. We'll maybe get it out for this, for the hub at the base. So now on the base, this one, it has a larger surface area where, the, where it contacts. So usually these require heat. <laughs> this one didn't. Okay, so there's my demo. I don't even get to use the, uh, the heat gun. I'll tell you the heat gun secrets though. Um, the, the factory tells me you got to use the heat gun, but be careful not to blister the paint and you don't want to have to deal with repainting these. One of my tricks is I just keep, I, I keep a touch on the, the metal frame nearby to pay attention to how hot it's getting. These little lightweight aluminum discs get really hot really fast and that's good. You don't need to heat up the whole, the whole casting there to do the job. So that's how we remove the, the logo discs. And so we're looking at the right arm. By the way, the entire assembly of turntable with the two arms coming up from it, that's the fork. These aren't forks, those are arms. And each arm is held down by a nut. That's a custom aluminum nut. It has a set screw in the side that you can see here. And so my straight, small bristol wrench doesn't access that because it has to come in from an angle. They don't make ball and bristol wrenches, so that doesn't work. Crestar telescopes come with a little envelope that yours may have that has a small bristol wrench. The problem here is that its short leg is still too long, so it can't go in there. So what you need to do is find another bristol wrench where you can cut it down to a very short, short end here. And that's what we use to loosen this up. You can usually find these things on eBay for a few dollars and you can cut it down by, if you don't have all the proper machine tools, just give it a few good nicks with a file and snap it off in a vise and then file it or sand it down. 
So it's, it's my practice when doing set screws to be really sure that I've got the tool in to depth. You might only get one chance because if you don't have this to the right depth, maybe there's some grunge in there, um, you might ruin that nut and now you've got a real problem and you're cutting off a custom nut. Doing this work doesn't require skill, but it does require, well, you could call it fear or judgment. There, it broke free. And because this engages the threads, just getting it loose isn't good enough. You've got to get it out of the way, not just of the threads that it deformed, but the threads that it hadn't deformed. And so I'm getting 120 degrees per turn here. It's protruding enough. That should be fine. Sometimes I can just get these off. Yep, finger loose and um, and that does the job. You probably like to know what order things went in. I use a Q-tip and I simply put it on the Q-tip in order. So here they have the next after the nut are two wavy spring washers that have three little lobes in each direction. Um, I'm used to seeing on older models, they were just using the conventional spring washer that just kind of bent into a saddle shape. And then that's followed by, looks like a single thin brass washer. And now I've got my little stack here. Um, very often I will um, do things differently. Sometimes I will put only one spring washer in and so that we can get preferred tension. And I have seen many, many, many different, I should say never the same arrangement of washers and springs in Questar telescopes, including all the ones that I'm confident have had only factory service. So I think some of it depends on what's in the parts bin, some of it depends on who's doing the assembly, and presumably all for good reasons because they want to fine tune each scope and make it right. That's not a criticism of Questar. And, and uh, so I'm about ready to take this out, but we do need to remove the, um, the drive knob. And that's just one set screw on a smooth shaft, comes right out. So this arm is pulled that direction by the spring that just attached onto a little pin. There's an eccentric bushing here that that supports the pinion and pushes the rotation of, of this bushing, sends the pinion upward so that it has some positive pressure to engage the edge of the declination discs. And so what we're going to do is loosen, thumbnail's very handy for this, get that spring off of there. Now as we pivot it, you can see that the pinion comes downward to its lowest culmination, if you will, and um, that pinion slides in and out freely now because, oh, and it's beautifully lubricated. This is a only a 10-year-old scope, and it just slides through nice and slick there. Um, and on, on this side, you can see the pinion has the little groove in it that engages there, but now it's clear, and that means that the drive stack can come out. So on the, on the declination drive stack, we get another wavy washer. That's what presses the, um, provides some resistance between this disc and the arm. And, um, and then we have a Teflon sheet, which if there's anything wrong with it, and there's not, it looks very good condition, um, that can be replaced inexpensively by the factory uh, when you're putting things back together. That, that prevents friction between the, the declination discs and the arm surface. And so one thing that often happens because we have this washer here pressing against the sheet, um, this hasn't had much of it yet, but over the years it will tend to dish that out and that'll be the failure point for this and you probably just want to replace the, 
the sheet. When you do replace the sheet, you'll also find that they're cut over size and you get a little bit of, uh, of white showing around there. This one didn't do it, but it can, there I'll show you on the side, that's exaggerating, but you'll see some, you can see some white there and you may want to trim that down if you're persnickety. I've seen some factory new work that, um, or rather factory service work that um, leaves that a little oversized. It's just an aesthetic choice. And from here, we can remove, we're just gonna go all the way, taking down the disc here. Um, these, these drive discs, it's a stack of three, and they separate. Um, I'm seeing a little, there's a little film here that's different than I'm used to seeing. Um, I guess that Normally that would be kind of a stiff plastic that's glued down, but this is a, an adhesive sheet with some, um, okay. So now I'm just doing some analysis here. In this case, it looks like some glue from the, um, and, and I've just solved a problem with this scope, by the way. It may not need a drive service. The, for slewing the scope, you just want to move the, the tube, the barrel, manually by hand by a large distance. The drive must remain engaged to the pinion, and you want to be able to move the scope. Well, there's glue in here, and that's been stuck together for a long time. So it's unable to slew. This is why even with a fairly reliable tension on the, on the drive, it, it moves the scope fine. It fails the test of slipping when it slews. So, I'm going to clean this up. I may not need to replace these drives. We're going to do the reassembly just the same as if I replaced it. You can tell when they're worn because they tend to be turned over at the edge from the wear. This isn't really too bad. So I'm going to test this out and then see if that works. Honestly, it seems like this was the adhesive applied there and nobody removed this sheet in order to put the plastic sheet that's supposed to go there. So I'm going to order that from the factory. We finished dismantling the declination drive by removing the pinion and bushing and setting that aside. Obviously, you can see there's a um, couple of washers there that provide an offset. In most cases, this will be um, some nice uh, cleaning with the solvent and Q-tips and lubricating to put it back in. This one's not in need of that, but I'll probably do it anyway.